Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's Quinton here and welcome to tutorial number 15. And in this tutorial, I'm going to take a look at something called if statements. Okay, so basically what an if statement is or what an if statement allows us to do is we can give the computer a test or a condition to check and if that condition or test evaluates to true then we can execute a line of code but if that condition or test evaluates to false then we can just go ahead and skip all of that code altogether and carry on with the rest of our program as if nothing ever happened okay so this will probably make a lot more sense if I just explain the basic syntax for an if statement and syntax is just a clever or fancy word for the structure of what our code looks like okay so to set up an if statement on your website then you'll go ahead and just write in the word if followed by two parentheses and inside our parentheses this is where we'll put a condition okay so we'll put our test over there and if that condition evaluates to true then we'll run some code here and if we want to run more than one line of code in our if statement then we actually have to use um, some little curly braces so I always start off my if statements with curly braces just in case I want to run more than one line of code just like that um, and if you guys are new to programming then you won't know this but guys that have a little bit of experience in programming know that there are two kinds of programmers there are the guys that start off their curly braces like this and then there are programmers who decide that this little curly brace deserves its own line I don't know why they think that but anyways they do so then they go ahead and they set up their if statement like that but you can do either or that's fine although just to save some space I like to keep my little curly brace up there at the top with the rest of the if statement okay so now let's take a look at an example real quick so if I go ahead and I make a variable up at the top of the page here I'll just call it var day okay and we'll set this equal to Thursday because let's say I wanted to have a website that displays a special weekend message on Friday then uh, what I can do is in my if statement I can check if day is equal to Friday so the, the way I do that is I'll type in my variable name day and then I want to check if my variable day is exactly equal to the word Friday so the way I do that is I actually use a double equal sign and the reason why I use two equal signs is because the single equal sign in JavaScript is already taken it already has another purpose its purpose is to assign this value to this variable so I can't use a single equal sign there I have to use a double equal sign when comparing two values so I want to see if day is equal to the word Friday and if it is then I want to do something okay and what I'm going to do is I'll just print out a message so document dot write and we can write a message on the screen that says uh, well we'll just go for Rebecca Black song so we'll go, it's Friday it's Friday Friday gotta get down on Friday anyways cool so we go ahead and uh, save that and now if I run this in Firefox we should get nothing printed out on the screen and the reason why that happens is because Thursday which is our day is not exactly equal to Friday so that's why this line of code didn't run the computer just went okay is Thursday equal to Friday no okay then I'll ignore all of this and then it would have carried on with whatever programming or code was down here 
But if I set my day equal to Friday, and then I go ahead and I save this and go ahead and refresh this in Firefox, you can see I have It's Friday, It's Friday printed out on the screen. Okay? So the reason why that happened was because day, which is our variable, is Friday, and Friday is equal to Friday, therefore this line of code can run. So this line of code will only run if this condition evaluates to true. And this doesn't have to be just with strings. We can go ahead and use numbers as well. So instead what I'll do is uh, let's change this variable at the top here to age and we'll set the age equal to 17. And since I know that this line of code will only get printed out or will only get executed if this evaluation is true, I might as well just change this message here to yay, it's true. Okay, go ahead and uh, save this. So now we can check if the user is exactly equal to 18 years old. And the way we do that is we just change this expression inside the parentheses to say if age is double equal sign equal to 18, okay, then go ahead and write yay, it's true, okay. But now if we go ahead and we look at this, age is actually equal to 17. So is 17 equal to 18? Well, no, it's not. So we're actually going to get nothing printed out on the screen. Uh, and if I go ahead and run that in Firefox instead of minimizing it then you can see we've got absolutely nothing printed out on the screen but if I go ahead and I change this so if I go ahead and I change my age variable to exactly 18 then 18 is indeed equal to 18 and we should get this message yay it's true printed out on the screen so let's go back to Firefox again click refresh and there we go yay it's true but let's go ahead and minimize this and it's kind of pointless just checking if the user is exactly equal to 18 you know for most websites we might want to check if the user is older than 18 or younger than 18 and then make a response judged on that so the way we do that is instead of using a double equal sign to check if these numbers are exactly equal to each other what we can do is uh, we can go ahead and use the greater than sign or less than sign to check if the user is older than 18 or younger than 18 and uh, create a response judged on that so let's say we were creating an online gambling website or something like that okay the user would have to be older than 18 or at least in South Africa you have to be older than 18 before you can go into a casino so if age is greater than 18 then we can go ahead and run this code over here so let's go ahead and change our age to 16 or something like that then you can go ahead and uh, see when we refresh this in Firefox we don't get anything printed out on the screen because age which is 16 is less than 18 so this expression is false okay and therefore this line of code does not run but if we go ahead and we change our age to be 21 then 21 is indeed greater than 18 so this will be true and we can go ahead and refresh this in Firefox and there we go yay it's true okay but now we kind of have a problem because if a user is exactly 18 years old then he or she should be allowed to go into this online casino because they're exactly 18 so they're of age but when we're testing to see if they're greater than 18 we're not including 18 as part of our expression so if you can if I save this and I run this in Firefox now 
I'm going to get nothing printed out on the screen, which kind of means that age, obviously 18, is not greater than 18. So this is false, and our test would kind of not let the user into our casino. So if you want to include 18 as part of the expression, then you can say if age is greater than or equal to, so greater than or equal to 18, then we can go ahead and print this line of code over here. So let's go ahead and save that. And when I click refresh, you can see, yay, it's true because 18 is indeed not greater than, but it is equal to 18. Okay. So let's go over that again real quick. And if you're wanting to compare two values in an if statement, okay, to test if each value is exactly equal to the opposite one, then you go ahead and you use a double equal sign. That will check if this value is exactly equal to this value. But if you want to see if one is greater than the other, then you can go ahead and use the greater than sign. And if you want to check if they're less than, then you can go ahead and use the less than sign. Then, like I said, you can also use greater than or equal to to include this value. Or you can go ahead and say less than or equal to to include this value as less than or, or equal to. Okay. Then the other value which I didn't explain to you guys yet, and it's actually rather simple, is not equal to. So the way we do that in JavaScript is we'll put an exclamation mark and then an equal sign. And this means if age is not equal to 18. Okay, so if we go ahead and we save this now, we can see that we've got our age set to 18 at the moment. So 18 is actually equal to 18. So this message shouldn't print out on the screen. So if I go ahead and I refresh, there we go, nothing. But if I change this value to anything other than 18, so 15 or any other number other than 18, this becomes true again because age, which is 15, is not equal to 18. So when we go ahead and uh, refresh this now, there's our message popped up on the screen. So that's pretty cool. And uh, that's basically just really simple maths. So that's actually all I have for you guys in this video. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Please feel free to leave a comment and go ahead and click that like button. And if you guys want the code from this video, then you'll have to sign up on my forum. The link's in the description below. So thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next time.